Hey everybody, I'm going to share some of my experiences leading up to uh, contracting GBS. Uh, today the idea is to share what was happening in my life before and up to contracting GBS or having initial symptoms and then uh, from here we'll do other videos that describe the experience of uh, being in the hospital and recovering. Please stay tuned. So at the end of September 2019 I was diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome, acute motor and sensory axonal neuropathy, which is a very rare condition. It is truly equal opportunity in that it affects its victims without apparent bias for age, health, and other categories we have for people. One exception to note is that GBS has some link to immunizations like the flu vaccine, but is not a direct link and is nonetheless very rare. If you've had the flu vaccine, there is a question about GBS that has to be asked when consenting. Before I had it, I was mostly unaware of GBS. I recall questions about it when getting the flu vaccine, but it was a minor footnote to following recommendations for healthcare workers. I was preparing for an event as a food vendor going into the weekend having taken a few days off on either side of the event. The weekend before was busy with my son's 16th birthday party and hosting the event at a park. He wasn't 16 yet, but he was on his way and I was looking forward to uh, being with him doing all the things that happen when you turn 16. Immediately following the party was a gig at a local VFW with proceeds to support a local business that was damaged by a fire. I did all these things with a mild cold that just wouldn't quit. By Tuesday, I was feeling run down from working a lot in a retail box store and keeping up with the side business, playing in a band, and trying out for another band. I decided to take NyQuil when I got home from work and use one of my cushion days to sleep off the cold. I ended up falling asleep on the couch. The next morning, I woke up still dealing with the cold. It was almost like seasonal allergies, but my allergy pill had no effect, and NyQuil didn't seem to knock it out this round. I noticed tingling in my fingers and thought it, it was I was just having side effects to the NyQuil. I spent most of the day on the couch, but got up and went to my daughter's cross-country meet. She wanted to have a great season, but was struggling with recent onset of asthma. At the meet, I wanted to be at key points in the race to offer encouragement, but with tissue box in hand, I noticed tingling uh, was now moving up from my fingers to my elbows, and it was in my feet and lower legs up to my knees. It made it difficult to walk, but I'm stubborn about certain things, and I trudged after her. I continued to think, I just need to sleep this off. That night, I woke up to use the bathroom, but had a very difficult time walking around the bed. I pretty much stumbled to get there, and then stumbled to get back to bed. In the morning, I had an appointment to get tires on the car. Once everyone was off to school, I took my car in, but when I did laundry the day before, I uncharacteristically sent my wallet through the wash. When I got to the mechanics, I discovered I didn't have my money or credit cards. Here's where my stubbornness, foolishness, shines. I decided I should walk home to get my money and then walk or ride back to pay. It was only a couple of miles, and I was fit and a regular runner and Spartan trifecta holder. What's a couple of miles? I don't know how I looked, but I know that nothing was working right. It took real effort to put one foot in front of the other, but I told myself that it would be harder if I stopped, so I kept going. Eventually, my friend and partner in the food event was on her way to work, and she picked me up on her way. She brought me home and then to McDonald's across from the garage to get some food because I hadn't eaten. I grabbed a banana to eat on the way, but its consistency was like a foreign mush, and it had no flavor. The McDonald's food, too, had the same consistency and lacked taste, though the beverage was cold and that felt good. I finished my food in the waiting area of the garage and noted that swallowing was not normal. I wasn't able to get a good gulp. Here's 
Hard to believe, but despite my awkwardness in movement, no one questioned my ability to drive, and when the car was done, I drove home. By lunchtime, I was concerned that I wasn't going to sleep this off. I called my doctor, but they hadn't seen me in over five years, and they did not have an active file for me. I called another doctor, but they needed to have an initial visit before they saw me. Side note, I had a kidney stone removed about nine or ten months prior, so I thought I was active somewhere. I called my mother, who is a retired registered nurse, and we agreed that the ER was the best place for me to go. She offered to take me, but I told her school was almost done and my wife should be able to take me. That's what happened. She ended up taking me to the emergency room. As I was being admitted, I told the admission staff that I was having neurological symptoms. We waited less than a minute. I was seen by the same physician who had seen me when I went in for a bout of kidney pain uh, when I was dealing with the kidney stone. They asked me to balance on one foot and then put the other foot in front of the other. I couldn't do it. She sent me directly to the neuro emergency department. I think I soon fell asleep after asking them to wrap me up in blankets because I was so cold. Stay tuned for what happens next. Again, thank you for tuning in. And as always, please love each other. Thanks again. This poster shows the first few weeks that I was in the hospital leading up to my stay in the rehab hospital. Uh, note the October 6 photo is the most haunting one and that was the image that I saw and kind of stuck with me throughout my time until I could uh, get to the rehab hospital and actually look in a mirror.